Hamza Yousaf brought a fugitive Hamas commander to meet with Scottish government ministers, worked for a radical charity condemned by Western governments for its anti-Semitism and terror ties, and has advocated for progressive political Islam. I think we need to look into this a little bit more deeply. The material I'm going to present here is mainly from uh, research done by an organisation called Focus on Western Islamism. And a lot of what I'm going to say is reading from a report that they've done about Hamza Yousaf and the SNP. Now, Focus on Western Islamism as an organisation, they're very clear that their focus is on Islamism and not Islam in general. This is the way they describe the difference. They say they do not cover Islam in the, re in the West, but Islamism. Islam is a 1,400-year-old faith that includes a great range of sects and movements, while Islamism is a century-old utopian political ideology that seeks to return to past glories by imposing medieval religious laws on modern societies, Western democracies especially. So that's what they're looking into, and this is what they've had to say about uh, Hamza Yousaf. There's a link to this article in the description of the video, obviously. So Hamza Yousaf first came to the public's attention in the late 2000s while serving as an aide to former SNP leader Alex Salmond and other senior party leaders. At this time, Yousaf was also running the Scottish Islamic Foundation along with his cousin Osama Saeed. Right, the Scottish Islamic Foundation. You might have heard of that before. We're talking back in 2009 here. It was awarded a grant of £405,000 by the SNP government, and part of that was to stage the country's biggest ever celebration of Islamic culture in Glasgow in uh, June 2009. At the time, Alex Salmond predicted that Islam Fest would be an enormous event for Glasgow and for Scotland, but the project collapsed and the Scottish Islamic Foundation was forced to repay £128,000 of taxpayer funds it received, £72,000 had already been spent. So Hamza Yousaf's record of failure started even before he was elected uh, as an MSP. Right, in 2010, the Quilliam Foundation, a now defunct Muslim-run counter-extremism organisation, prepared a list for the British security officials warning that the Scottish Islamic Foundation was an entry-level Islamist group that contributed to the threat of radicalisation and extremism within British Islam. So an organisation funded and created by the Scottish Government was listed as an entry-level group threat of radicalisation and extremism. Okay, run, group run by Hamza Yousaf and his cousin. Right, parliamentary questions have revealed that Yousaf and Saeed, through the Scottish Islamic Foundation, brought extremists to meet with senior Scottish politicians in 2008, Yousaf organised a meeting with Scotland's First Minister for Europe, External Affairs and Culture, I think that was Linda Fabiani, featuring three prominent Islamists, Mohamed Sawala, Anas al Trukitri, and Ismail Patel. Two years earlier, Sawalha had been named by the BBC as a fugitive Hamas commander. And indeed, Sawala was later to become a member of the terror group's political bureau. As for Anas Altikriti, he has long served as a leading supporter of the Muslim, leading member of the Muslim Brotherhood in both the UK and Iraq. The Muslim Brotherhood is a pretty extreme organisation, as well as I'm sure you know. Ismail Patel, meanwhile, is another supporter of Hamas and had already at the time of the meeting established a reputation for hardline Islamism, including advocating killing of adulterers and punishment for free mixing of men and women. So, Hamza Yousaf's Scottish Islamic Foundation involved in bringing Hamas supporters, in one case a Hamas member, an activist, a leader, to meet the Scottish government in the Scottish Parliament. Anyway, Hamza Yousaf then gets elected. Let's see what comes next. Um, other Islamist groups continued to benefit from Yousaf's influence over the SNP government. In 2013, Yousaf, now elected and serving as Scotland's Minister for External Affairs and International Development, announced a £398,000 grant to Islamic Relief, one of the largest Islamic charities in the world, established by figures from the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood. Critics claimed more cronyism was likely at work, 
Before his election to the Scottish Parliament, Islamic Relief had appointed Hamza Yousaf as its media spokesperson. So again, Hamza Yousaf volunteers for this organisation, very involved in this organisation, gets elected, becomes part of this part of the government, gives this same organisation four hundred thousand okay, pounds. European and, Islam uh, and Islamic governments have denounced Islamic Relief because of the anti-Semitism of its officials and its long history of close ties to Hamas and other designated terrorist groups. In 2020, the State Department warned uh, about the blatant and horrifying anti-Semitism and glorification of violence exhibited at the most senior levels of Islamic relief worldwide. Now, I'll read some of the sources for that. There's a bit more about Islamic relief. Islamic relief has long been accused of funding terror. Both Israel and the United Arab Emirates have designate, designated Islamic Relief as a terror financing organization. In 2005, Russian authorities accused Islamic Relief of supporting terrorism in Chechnya. And in 2012, the Swiss banking giant UBS closed down Islamic Relief's accounts and blocked donations coming from its customers to the charity, uh, reportedly over terror financing fears. Four years later, HSBC did the same. In the Gaza Strip, Islamic Relief Fund's organizations closely linked to the terrorist organization Hamas. In February 2015, for example, Islamic Relief UK, using Swedish monies, funded a project run by the Al Falah Benevolent Society to provide aid to displaced families. Al Falah is run by a senior Hamas figure, Ramadan Tambura, and Jamal Hamadi Al Haddad who manages a Hamas-run Hebrew language program for Palestinians in Gaza titled Know Your Enemy. Another key partner for Islamic relief branches in Gaza is the Gaza Zakat Committee, also known as Islamic Zakat Society. IZS works closely with the Hamas government. It's managed by a prominent Hamas preacher named Hazam al-Siraj, a former student of Hamas founder Sheikh Yazim. Islamic Relief, Relief also maintains financial links with several terrorism-linked groups in the Middle East, including the Charitable, Charitable Society for Social Welfare, which was founded by Al-Qaeda terrorist and Bin Laden loyalist Abdul Majid al-Zindani. That's a bit more about the group that Hamza Yousaf used to volunteer for and that this Scottish government gave money for. It seems through Hamza's influence. This is the United States State Department's report on uh, Islamic Relief. The Office of the Special Envoy to Monitor and Combat Antisemitism condemns the well-documented record of anti-Semitic attitudes and remarks made by the senior leadership of Islamic Relief Worldwide. Given that Islamic Relief Worldwide has an annual budget of approximately $100 million plus and holds the designation as a charitable organization internationally, uh, as well as 501 status in the United States, this record of anti-Semitism presents a significant issue for all donors and donor countries to IRW. The consistent pattern of spreading the most vile anti-Semitic vitriol by IRW's leadership causes us to question the core values of the organization. Now, you could say it might lead you to question the core values of people who, who volunteer to help this organization as well such as uh, Hamza Yousaf. So again, it seems this charity has strong links with uh, Hamas and activity in uh, Gaza in particular. And the Scottish government, of course, sends aid to Gaza. It's, it's out with his remit. Foreign aid isn't part of the, isn't devolved to the Scottish government. Uh, but they gave half a million pounds uh, to, of aid to the region in 2015. And Hamza Yousaf complained that he wasn't allowed to go and visit Gaza to see how that was spent. Now, I guess my question there is, does Hamza Yousaf has a spe have a special interest in Gaza because of his Muslim faith? Or out of all the needs in the world, is that where he thought the need was most pressing, and where he thought that the Scottish government's aid budget would be most effectively spent? To be honest, I think it's the former, not the latter. I mean, just before we leave the subject of Hamza Yousaf appearing to use his government p position to direct funds to his favourite causes to his friends and also family. You probably remember the story that Hamza Yousaf's mother, I don't know if she still does, but she ran a, a charity in Glasgow for Muslim women and it operated from a single house. 
and they were given a grant to reduce their carbon footprint for two years running. And that grant was about £150,000 for each of two years running. Which we now, they may have ticked the official boxes. That may have gone through all the proper channels. But so far as I'm concerned, that's just corruption. Hamza Yousaf seems to be quite adept at diverting funds, taxpayers' funds, to the causes and the people that he personally wants to support. Now, let's go back to Hamza Yousaf's cousin now, Osama Saeed, uh, with whom Hamza ran the Scottish Islamic Foundation at taxpayers' expense. He's described here as a notorious Islamist, and he stood as an SNP candidate as well in Glasgow. In 2005, he called for the establishment of an Islamic caliphate, a sort of united sort of Islamic empire, if you like, under one leader. Um, in 2006, uh, Saeed voiced praise for Al-Qaeda operative Anwar al-Awlaki, writing, Imran Anwar al-Awlaki was originally hounded in the United States because two of the 9-11 bombers happened to pray in his mosque. He preached nothing but peace, and I pray that he will be able to do so again. So he's saying, this poor innocent Muslim preacher, he's been given a hard time just because two of the 9-11 terrorists happened to go to his mosque. How unfair is that? It then turned out uh, that this preacher became a leader in Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and was killed in 2011 in a drone strike targeting the terrorist group. Had he been elected for the SNP in Glasgow, people say that he would have been the first openly Islamist MP in the United Kingdom. Now, to what extent does Hamza Yousaf share the views of his cousin? Well, that's unclear. But the two do remain close. Here's a little tweet of Hamza uh, for his cousin's birthday. It's quite interesting. During the election campaign, when Osama Saeed was trying to get elected, his main opponent was none other than Anasawa. And at one point, Osama Saeed attacked Anasawa because Anasawa's father was on the board of Finsbury Park Mosque at the same time as a Hamas extremist. And he was trying to embarrass him for that. I mean, we won't even go down... Uh, that avenue. Right, in 2010, Saeed left Scotland for Qatar to work for Al Jazeera, the sort of Arabic broadcaster, uh, the Qatari media channel partly staffed by Muslim Brotherhood operatives. During his time as an elected SNP official, Hamza Yousaf has been an enthusiastic supporter of Al Jazeera, as you can see by this collection of tweets. In 2011, as policymakers, moderate Muslims and counter-extremism analysts expressed fears of an impending Muslim Brotherhood government in Egypt, Yousaf tweeted, All this talk coming from the US and UK about an Islamist government taking control is smoke screens and mirrors to protect their own interests. Okay, So moderate Muslims, uh, most people in the West, a, a lot of sort of balanced analysts were saying, you know, this could be bad news, having a pretty extreme Islamic government taking over. This is not really what we want. But Hamza Yousaf was saying, nothing to worry about at all. Right, the report goes on to say, this sort of language from Yousaf, however, has died down in recent years. I wonder why that is. Has he changed his mind? Or is this for political reasons? Has he realised that it's probably not a good idea to be so open about what he believes? I don't know. I don't know. However, critics have raised alarm at some of the legislation Yousaf has championed. In 2020, for instance, journalists and free expression organisations expressed alarm at the SNP's hate crime bill introduced by Yousaf in his role as Justice uh, Secretary. Critics warned the bill, which made it illegal to stir, stir up religious hatred, regardless of intent, is simply a revived criminalisation of blasphemy. We've talked about that on many other occasions. I won't go into that uh, any further. So, But while Yousaf continues to advance some other Islamic ideas, his underlying ideology is not clear-cut. Obviously, because he's in favour of every progressive cause going. He would say it's for same-sex marriage, every LGBT thing going, transgenderism, abortion, the whole lot. And basically, he seems to throw out his like core Islamic moral principles Completely, completely. Now, why that is, we'll talk about in a minute, but that's very definitely the case. So it says, um, Yousaf himself has declared that mainstream Islam appears unfriendly to gay marriage, but his promise not to use his faith 
as a basis for legislating. Remember in the leadership campaign, he'd have a go at Kate Forbes. He'd say, I'm a Muslim, but that won't influence how I legislate. It won't influence how I vote in the parliament. So it says his declared positions have led to some topsy-turvy politics. They certainly have. I mean, presenting himself as you know, a proud Muslim while denying really key aspects of uh, Islamic teaching. So on the face of it, these progressivist ideas and Yusuf's recent statements and behaviour do not indicate evidence of continued Islamist leadings, leanings. And indeed, Yusuf has expressed some encouraging condemnations of radicalism in recent years, such as his denunciation of Islamist clerics who have praised Pakistani violent extremists, his further urged mosques not to give platforms to their supporters in the West. And let's be absolutely clear, Hamza Yousaf has unequivocally condemned uh, Hamas's attack on Israel on the 7th of October. So, yep, uh, that's quite true. It is possible, however, that Yousaf might be a believer in a genuine confluence of Islamism and progressivism. In 2012, he declared his support for progressive political Islam. In the same Twitter thread, he praised the main Islamic party in Tunisia as an example. So does that mean the Hamza Yusuf, basically, he wants a Muslim government, an explicitly Muslim government. He thinks that's the ideal. Maybe you can't manage that in Scotland yet, but that's the ideal. But that Islamic government would have progressive values. You know, they'd, pre they'd be promoting transgenderism and, and same-sex marriage, uh, etc. I mean, it's hard to get your head around that. But what else could you mean by progressive political Islam? Who knows what he means? Now, I looked up the main Islamic party in Tunisia, and it is renowned as the most sort of liberal is Islamic party in the world. But it is an Islamic party. So if you're up for those, they're saying, you know, we're a Muslim country, we're, we're running on Islamic principles. But if you look what they actually do, it's fairly liberal, relatively speaking. Yusuf should clarify his relationship with the hardline Islamists of his and the Scottish Islamic Foundation's past and explain what exactly he means by his support for progressive political Islam. Yeah, quite agree. I don't know what he means. I'll, I'll talk about that later. The, it says in the article, at the very least, if Yusuf is not an Islamist, he is a fellow traveller of extremists. And indeed, as with many nationalist groups, the SNP has a history of embracing Islamist allies. In 2005, Azam Tamimi, the British special envoy for the terrorist group Hamas stated, we have been impressed by the warm and welcoming attitude of the SNP. Now, the primary link for that isn't working in the article, but I did find it online in other reports. So there are reports online of that. So that's Hamas's special envoy, uh, impressed by the warm and welcoming attitude of the SNP. The embrace of Islamism does not appear merely to be the product of SNP's ideas about courting the Muslim vote. Foreign Islamist regimes also attract the SNP's attention. SNP leaders have visited Iran, diverted public funds into the pockets of Iranian regime proxies, and taken part in events at radical Shia mosques in the UK, alongside personal representatives of Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei. Right, to add a bit more detail from another source. Uh, two Glasgow conferences have been attended by Iranian cler cleric Mohammed Shamali, the former UK representative of Iran's supreme leader, the Ayatollah. Nicola Sturgeon said of Shamali, you're helping us play our part in building a better world. Okay, Nicola Sturgeon said the representative of Iran, Iran, you are helping us play our part in building a better world. Whether or not the SNP benefits from such partnerships is unclear. Although in 2019, Potkin Azamer noted for the Middle East Forum that Iranian disinformation efforts appear to be particularly focused on advancing Scottish independence ideas and advancing support for the SNP. And there's evidence provided there that you know bots, etc., through the Iranian source, have supported Scottish independence during the referendum campaign and at other times as well. So what do you make of that? What can we learn from that? 
Does Hamza Yusuf agree with these people that he's associated with in the past? Well, difficult to say. Now, he said that his Islamic faith won't influence you know, the laws that he passes. Well, OK, but were they carefully chosen words, I wonder? Was it saying they're not going to influence the laws I pass, but they might influence other aspects of my leadership as first minister? Is he perhaps thinking, I'm going to sacrifice my position on social issues for more important issues than maybe he as a Muslim might see as more central, uh, various foreign policy issues, uh, for example. Now, wouldn't it be fascinating to try and pin him down about these things? I wish that would happen in the Parliament. I wish that would happen through the Scottish media. But I fear that is not going to happen. Now, when it's come to the Israel-Palestine conflict, that really seems to be an absolute top priority for Hamza Yusuf. He condemned Hamas's attack. But since then, I would say his stance has been on the sort of anti-Israel end of the spectrum, viewing things from now as just merely a humanitarian crisis. It's not a just war. So he's very much on that side of the uh, of the spectrum. And does that relate to his his Muslim beliefs? I suspect that it does in some ways. So Hamza Yusuf, though, is a mystery. I used to say that he seems to stand for nothing. He doesn't seem to have his own principles at all. He just bends in the wind, does whatever's going to be easiest in order to keep himself in a job and you know, climb the ladder. That seems to be the way. But what this article is suggesting is, does he bend in the wind on these sort of year-by-year -year political issues in order to keep himself in his position, in order to advance a higher cause? Now, is that higher cause his progressive Islamic political vision? Not even sure what that means. I don't know, but, but is it? It seems like this is a core thing for him. But then the question becomes, is the progressivism a short-term compromise in order to advance an Islamic political vision? I don't know. I don't know. I wish I could talk to him about it. I wish I could ask him about it, but I don't expect that is going to happen. The thing I would say with absolute confidence, though, is that Hamza Yousaf uses taxpayers' money and manages to funnel them towards friends and family in the broadest sense. Let's put it that way. Let's say the, the, the legal boxes might be ticked, but it's obvious what is going on. Now, we've got Muslim members of the Scottish Family Party, Muslim supporters as well. We have a lot of very positive conversations with Muslims, and our message is always, as it is to everyone, if you've got socially conservative values, valuing family and marriage, which most Muslims do, then we say, we need you. We need you. Scotland needs you. You've got really something really positive to bring into political debate in Scotland and we'd really love you to get involved. When it comes to the Israel-Palestine issue, there will be a range of views on that. But personally, I would see it as one of many world issues where there are conflicts, where there are tensions, where people might be suffering in various ways. Um, but I think Scottish politics, as far as we're concerned, is about making Scotland better. Now, if top of your agenda is the Israel-Palestine conflict. That's the thing that matters most to you. And, and secondary to that is, you know, what's going on in Scotland? You know, are children are being corrupted in school, etc. If the Israel-Palestine is the top thing, well, it's not the top thing for us. It's, that's one of many issues around the world where there are, there are problems that need to be addressed. Um, now, if as a Muslim, if you look at politics and think, I want to get into politics to advance the Islamic cause, then I say, well, maybe the Scottish Family Party is not the part of you. Similarly, if someone says, I want to advance the Christian cause, well, that's not really our philosophy. We want to advance the policies that are going to make for a flourishing society. So whether you believe in those policies because you're a Muslim or because you're a Christian or because you're neither, that doesn't matter. We unite behind the policies. And if you share our vision for creating a flourishing society in Scotland, we'd love you to come and join us. And a good place to start would be at our conference on Saturday, Saturday afternoon in Glasgow. That's Saturday the 11th of November. There's a link below for you to get your tickets. We would love to see you. And thanks for watching.